Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and I know I've been getting a lot of requests to make this video, so we're going to do it. We're going to answer what actually is an actuary. And in making this video, I thought, let me Google what is an actuary and, you know, look at the Google images. And I found stuff like a generic image of people in an office or a random graph that doesn't tell any information or a bunch of jargon um, or some high school maths and a girl who looked like she had just been to a little Wayne concert, you know, making it rain type of thing. But it's an important question because, I mean, when you tell people that you're studying actuarial science, you get two, um, two responses, okay? The very first response is people are like, oh, wow, that's amazing, you're so smart, and, you know, they get all excited. I like those people, okay? The other people... They're like, what's an actuary? You know, and they're looking all confused and stuff. And I don't like those people because it's quite a difficult um, question to answer. I mean, what is an actuary and how do you explain that to someone? I mean, if you say that an actuary is someone who evaluates risk and opportunity, they're skilled in mathematics, statistics, economics, and finance, and can forecast the future by analyzing past events and have the ability to build probability models to solve a wide variety of business problems, you're going to get that face back, you know. And, I mean, so you, we need to find a simpler way to explain what an actuary does. And I did find this at the end of the, the Wikipedia article on actuarial science. It says, actuaries are math-obsessed, socially disconnected individuals with shockingly bad comb-overs. And I can, um, I can, yeah, I can say that this is not true. It's not true at all. I mean, my comb-over isn't that bad. The rest is true, but that comb over part, no. So yeah, thanks internet for doing that. But let's be serious now. Let's look at what is an actuary. And uh, I'm going to just try to break it down, you know, because an actuary is more than just a businessman. He is a business professional. And as a professional, he belongs to a society, you know, kind of like knights did back in the, the olden days, you know, they belonged to those guilds and stuff. So if you're thinking actuary, think of a knight. Okay, um, and like a knight, actuaries also have a code and a set of ethics and stuff like that. And we also need to, you know, prove our worth. Uh, you know, so just like a knight has to go and slay dragons, an actuary has to slay like a million of the hardest exams set by mankind to get in. And no, no, I'm, I'm being serious. Like writing these exams are trying to slay a dragon. I mean, this is what my exams look like. I mean, look at that. Roar. I mean, these things are scary. And that's what, not many people survive the exam process. So when you become an actuary, it's kind of like joining an elite club. And it's very rare to find one of us, you know, in the wild. But let's put the game analogies aside and let's look at what do actuaries do? You know, what is the job? Um, I mean, most of us, we design insurance products so that people's uh, possessions are protected. You might say, well, what are, what are they protected against? Well, you know, tornadoes, fires, floods, and earthquakes, and all these horrible catastrophes, you know, can wipe people out. Actuaries can build financial instruments to protect against these things. And, I mean, we can use the same ideas to, you know, to set pension contributions so that people can retire and, en and enjoy their old age. Um, we've invented life policies to keep uh, families' financial security intact when a loved one dies. We understand risk and can safeguard businesses from unforeseen movements in the market. Uh, we know where to invest and how asset returns are correlated. This allows people to save up, you know, for something like their child's education. We also know who is most likely to repay their loans and so who should receive credit to buy their dream homes. Uh, we develop medical aid so that people can afford to visit doctors and get help in hospitals. Um, we comprehend forces like mortality and can predict various population movements. You know, we do a lot of research on HIV AIDS and see what measures are the most effective. You know, we do a lot of useful stuff. And basically, whenever there is uncertainty, actuaries, you know, can help out. And I mean, in the future, I believe it will be the actuaries who will be at the forefront of developing artificial intelligence and contributing to cognitive computing. I mean, already they're using simple statistics um, in, you know, the foundation of machine learning. But a lot, a lot of reasons why people do study actuarial science is because of the money. You know, we get paid big cash. And the reason for this is the business we do is, is on a grand scale. 
I mean, recently, this is happening now. Um, LNG is busy buying a $9 billion annuity book. Nine, oh, sorry, nine billion pounds. Nine billion pounds. That's that's a lot of money. I mean, you can buy a lot with nine billion pounds. Um, Actry is also very good on the stock exchange, and they kind of coin it there as well. So, you know, we we get the cash. We get the cash. And um, some people do call us arrogant science. I mean, because we do think highly of ourselves. Um, but I think that's just because. They're jealous because, I mean, if you just had to Google what is the number one job in the world, you will see the actuary tops the majority of those lists. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to secure homes, help the elderly, protect families, care for the sick, and make lots and lots of money, then actuarial science is for you. And, yeah, I hope this video has helped explain what us actuaries actually do. And I mean, next time somebody asks you that question, you know, you meet one of these people, please share um, this video with them. And whatever you do, don't tell them that we're math obsessed and socially disconnected. And whatever you do, don't mention the bad comb over. Okay. If you do, I will only forgive you if you subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time for the next video. Cheers.